to be a blessing to you. We serve an awesome God in spite of what's going on. And to all of you who are viewing online on Facebook Live or whatever device that you may be tuned in to, we certainly thank you for coming in to this house, this great house, Hopewell Church, uh, where none other than one of the greatest pastors, my friend, uh, Pastor Christopher, amen, amen, swims is the pastor and you are doing it. We know you are watching, Pastor, and I wanted to let you know uh, that, that your team is an awesome team, man. Uh, the spirit has showed up in this place already, and, and I really needed that worship. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Musicians, come on, let's just give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. And, and I, want to, I want to speak a blessing upon your life, and I pray that you receive it because not every church is able to do ministry like this. Uh, not every church has musicians and not every church has a, a master of ceremony who will do uh, so God is going to bless you guys amen you just keep being faithful to the kingdom he's going to bless you he's going to reward you amen and we bring you greetings from the House of Hope Ministries in Paducah Kentucky um, we are certainly grateful and glad to be here with you on this day uh, and we certainly thank God for one of our uh, the greatest armor bears that I have with me, Miss Glenda Hamilton. Uh, amen. She, she keeps me in line. Amen. Keeps me in check. Amen. But God is a good God. Can we go into a word of prayer? Can we go into a word of prayer? Is that okay? Father, we thank you so much for being the God that you are. You are a kind God. And as we ease our spirits, God, we say, have your way. Your spirit is already here, God. And when your spirit shows up, God, things change. Things turn around. Things begin to work out for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Tears begin to dry up in your presence. Strength begins to get more powerful in your presence. Worries begin to become less in your presence. So we say thank you for your presence in here on today, God. We say thank you so much for being the God that looks down from heaven and forgives us for all of our sins. Thank you for using us, God. You could have chose to use anybody in the world. But we thank you that you use broken vessels like us. Thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary that reaches the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. We say thank you. And God, I pray a special blessing upon this house, upon this great man of God, upon the first lady and their children. We speak elevation, we speak promotion. And we thank you for everything that you've given this house to continue to worship your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and put those hands together if you're excited to be here. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. He is a good God. And we pray that everybody who's viewing online, that if you would, we take worship serious here at Hope Well, and we pray that you turn off your TVs, your television, and just begin to gather your family around. Yes. Uh, whatever device you're using, whether it be your smart TV or or your iPad or your iPhone, uh, you want to make sure that uh, worship is still sacred, amen? Uh, because God is still able to move, amen? The church may uh, not be physically able to function right now, but uh, nothing stops God from moving. I'm glad that God is a God that can move anywhere, amen? He can move in your car. He can move at the gym on the treadmill. He can move when the church is empty. Am I right about it? Uh, we certainly thank God, so we pray that you are paying attention and giving God your undivided attention. Uh, and I do believe that God has a word for us on this day. I won't be long, but I will be strong. Uh, All right. I, 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 amen. I uh, pray that you have your Bibles. Uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 6. The book of Joshua, chapter 6. The book of Joshua, chapter 6. And I've already found the amen crowd. They're behind me. Yeah, we're here. They came to have church. Joshua 6, Joshua 6, and I pray that you're turning uh, with me as you're watching live. Joshua 6, 
verses 1 through 5. Listen to what the word of God reads. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred or shut up mm -hmm. because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Right. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho or I have given Jericho into your hands mm -hmm. along with his kings and his fighting men. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to march around the city once with all the armed men. Mm -hmm. Do this six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. Mm -hmm. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Yeah. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. Watch this. When you hear the sound of a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Well, then the wall will fall and the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. Watch this, watch this. He tells them, please listen to me. He tells them for six days to walk around the wall one time. God had made them a promise. He tells them this is how you're going to get the problem. You're going to walk around this wall six times. Uh -huh. Uh, once six times every day. And then he says on the seventh day, uh -huh. I want you to walk around the wall seven times. Seven times. And on the last uh, round, I want you to shout, shout and the walls will come down. You got uh -huh. this? On the last lap you take, uh -huh. I, I want you to shout, shout and the walls will come down. On the last lap you take, on the last lap you take, I want you to shout and the wall will come down. You got to go once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. But on that seventh lap, which is the last lap, uh, that wall is going to come down and you're going to receive every blessing that I promised you. And I want to talk from the subject, this is my last lap. This is my last lap. Look at your neighbor to your left and say, this is my last lap. Ah, that was the wrong neighbor. Look at the neighbor on the love seat and tell him, this is my last lap. Ah, that's the wrong neighbor. Look at, shout to somebody who's in the kitchen and tell him, this is my last lap. Ah, listen to me, the children of God or the Israelites were in route to Canaan. And if you know anything about Canaan, it is described by God as the land that flows with milk and honey. Uh -huh. The land of nothing but great things. Uh, but before they would obtain Canaan, they would have to defeat Jericho. Saints, in Jericho, Jericho was a city known for being a strong city. Uh -huh. Everybody was terrified of Jericho. Jericho, the city was known for its strength and its power and military skills. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to deal with Jericho. So I see in Jericho, there was a wall that surrounded the entire city where the purpose of the wall was, was for no one could go in and no one could come out. Mm -hmm. Please listen to me. This wall, somebody shout this wall. This wall. This wall was 20 feet high and 20 feet thick. That's a big wall. Uh, look at somebody say, that's a big wall. There was no way they were going to be able to get beyond this wall. It was impossible. There was no way they could go around the wall or over the wall or through the wall. And even armed soldiers stood on the wall with AKs. And if anybody ever tried to cross the wall, they would surely die. And if they were going to get this wall to fall, they were going to have to believe and trust in God. Okay. 
Saints, the wall was now a major problem. The wall was keeping them from receiving what God had promised them. Okay. This wall was an obstacle. It was a setback. It was a disappointment. Somebody shout this wall. Uh, what they were now facing now, saints of God, was a wall. And this wall was keeping them from receiving the promises of God and what God had promised them. And if they could just get past this one wall, mm -hmm. everything would be much better. Nash, nudge your neighbor and say this one wall. One wall. If I can just get past this one wall, yeah. uh, everything would be much better. Can I tell you what was behind this wall? Peace was behind this wall. Joy was behind this wall. Happiness was behind this wall. Healing was behind this wall. Financial freedom was behind this wall. Restoration was behind this wall. Celebration was behind this wall. Dreams were behind this wall. Promotion was behind this wall. Change was behind this wall. Better jobs were behind this wall. Opportunity were behind this wall. But there was just one problem. The wall was in the way. Okay. And I believe I have somebody online, and I believe I have about seven people in here who knows about facing a wall, that the only thing that's standing between you and what God has promised is this wall, this situation, this circumstances. But look at somebody and say, God is a God that makes ways out of no way. And if God says the wall is going to come down, you can trust that the wall is going to come down. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that we serve a God who specializes in bringing walls down, who specializes in making ways out of no way. You ought to give God a praise right there. I'm glad that no wall can stop my blessing. No wall can stop my miracle. No wall can stop my happiness. No wall can stop my joy. No wall can stop my peace. You ought to give God praise for being a God who tears down walls. I feel like preaching in this place. Uh, I believe I got at least three people who knows about experiencing a wall. As a matter of fact, all week long you've been experiencing a wall. For six months you've been experiencing a wall. But God told me to tell you that that wall is about to come down. That wall is about to come down. If you begin to praise him right now, you'll begin to feel that the wall is about to come down. My God, if they could just get through this one wall, everything would be okay. Somebody in here saying, I just need this one wall to come down. Because if this one wall comes down, you would feel much better. You would live better. Your marriage would be better. Your ministry would be better. Your children would be better. Your relationship would be better. Uh, your grades would be better. The bank account would be better. But if I could just get past this one wall, everything would be okay. Uh, and maybe some of you still hadn't got it yet. But let me explain to you. And I'm almost done. Let me explain to you what a wall is. All right. A wall. Somebody shout a wall. A wall. Oh, that's not loud enough. Somebody shout a wall. A wall. Uh, come on, somebody shout a wall. A wall. A wall. Let me tell you what a wall is. A wall is anyone or anything that's keeping you from getting uh, what God has promised you. Repeat, rewind, let me say it one more time. A wall, somebody shout a wall. A wall is anyone or anything that's keeping you from getting what you've been praying for and what God has promised you. Is there anybody in here who has been praying for God to something? Uh, is there anybody in here who's been believing God for what he has told you? Is there anybody in here who's been waiting a mighty, 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 mighty long time uh, for this wall to fall? You ought to begin to give God praise right now. Uh, watch me, please listen to me. God had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. And they had been praying for a better life. And the only thing that was holding them back uh, from what God had promised them is that wall. Somebody shout that wall. Let me shout you just one time and I'm almost done. Watch this. Although the wall was a disappointment. 
the wall was a great place for God to move. Right. Now you got to get this, although the wall was a disappointment, the wall was a great place for God to move. Right. Let me preach like I feel it, although the wall was an upset and a disappointment and a setback, it was still a great place for God to move. And I believe I got somebody in here that you're in a bad place, but God told me to tell you, it's the best place for me to move. Walls is where I show up. Walls is where I break stuff down. Walls is where I give my best blessing. Walls is where I give you joy. Walls is where I give you peace. Somebody ought to give God praise I'm for the wall. As a matter of fact, if it had not been for the wall, you wouldn't praise the way you praise. You wouldn't play the way you play. You wouldn't drum the way you drum. So you ought to thank God for the wall. You ought to praise him right now. Thank him for this wall. I dare you to stand to your feet. Begin to give him praise for this wall. Begin to give him praise for the wall. The wall picked me up. The wall turned me around. The wall placed my feet on solid ground. You ought to give God praise for the wall. Give him praise for the wall. Give him praise for the wall. Shout hallelujah for the wall. Let me bless you as I tell the story. Uh, uh, let me bless you while I tell the story. God tells them, uh, for six days, I want you to walk around the wall one time. But then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times. But on the seventh lap, which is the last lap, I want you to just begin to shout and give me glory. Somebody needs to know that this is your last lap. This is your last cry. This is the last time you'll ever have to deal with this. High five somebody and say, this is my last lap. High five somebody. Say, this is the last time I'm crying about this. High five somebody and tell them I'm about to get my joy back. After I finish this lap, you're going to see a different me. After I finish this lap, you're going to see me more blessed than I've ever been blessed. After this last lap, you're going to see me shout. After this last lap, you're going to see me smile. After this last lap, you're going to see everything turning around in my life. Somebody shout, I'm on my last lap. Now give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. My last lap. My last lap. My last lap. My last lap. But watch this. Here's your shout and I'm done. I'm done. Watch this. God tells them on the last lap, uh -huh. when you hear the sound of the trumpet, loud sounding sound yeah. of the trumpet, uh -huh. he says the long sound of the trumpet. Yeah. See, sometimes short praises can't do it. Yeah. All right. Sometimes a short praise can't do it. But sometimes you got to give the devil a long praise before the wall comes down. And let me shout you. Listen here, the wall didn't come down. Uh, please listen to me. The wall didn't come down uh, on the seventh lap. But watch this, the wall came down on the seventh lap after they begin to praise God. They, they started praising God uh, before the wall came down. And let me tell you something. You got to learn how to give God a long praise. He's been good to you for a mighty long time. You got to learn how to give him a long praise. Every day of my life, he puts food on my table, clothes on my back. Come on and bless his name. Give him about 10 seconds. This is my last lap. This is my last lap. I'm going to praise him while I can. I'm going to bless him while I can. This is my last lap. Give God glory. Please listen to me. For everyone who's viewing, you've been dealing with a wall. You haven't told anybody about this wall. But this wall often keeps you up late at night. You've been crying about this wall. This wall has you staring in a daze. You're worried. But God says, be not weary in well doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Listen to me. Here's what I've discovered about walls. Walls don't last forever. 
situations and problems don't last forever. And listen to me, your wall has to come down. But watch this, God told him to, and I was like, man, why in the wide world would God just, because God could have easily snapped his finger and the wall came down. God could have spoke to the wall and the wall easily came down. But he tells them to walk around this wall. He says, walk around this wall one time for six days. I'm like, God, why would you tell them to walk around the wall one time for six days? Then on the seventh day, walk around the wall seven times. Watch this. God wanted to see if they would be consistent to him outside of the wall before the wall came down. Because if they wouldn't be consistent to him outside of the wall, he knew they wouldn't be consistent inside of the wall. See, you got to be faithful wherever you are. You just can't come to church one Sunday and skip five. You got to be consistent, baby. You can't tithe one Sunday and then skip 15 Sundays. You got to be consistent. And all God is trying to do is see if you'll be consistent outside of the wall. Because if you won't be consistent outside of the wall, he knows that you won't be consistent inside of the wall. And I said, God, why would you even, you know, this wall was an ugly wall. And the next thing God showed me is that the reason I put this ugly wall up there is because, you know what, I wanted them to hate where they were. And see, it's not until you hate where you are that God elevates you to somewhere else. See, you got to hate being in this bad relationship that's not of God. You got to hate being in this situation. You got to hate being broke, busted, and disgusted. And it's not until you hate something that you find yourself desiring to move somewhere else. My God. My God. So listen to me, all of you that are out there watching, we pray that God brings that wall down. But you got to be consistent. You got to hate where you are. And you got to be willing to praise God. Even if the wall doesn't come down. Here's one more and I'm done for you. And before any miracle that God gives you, he's going to always give you instructions. And what determines whether or not you get the blessing or if the wall comes down is that you obey his instructions. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. And you got to follow his instructions. If he tells you to walk around the wall one time for six days, guess what? You got to walk around the wall one time for six days. You can't stop on the fourth lap. That's disobedience. So listen to me, if you're out there, and we extend this opportunity to you, if you don't know this God who can tear down walls that's holding you back from your blessing, I want you to just begin to bow your heads and you can even contact the Hopewell team. They have a team of prayer warriors. All you have to do is type online. And while you're watching right now, I want you to just begin to type, this wall is coming down. This wall is coming down. Come on, begin to type everywhere out there. Begin to type on your cell phones. This wall is coming down. And I'm on my last lap. I'm on my last lap. Come on, I'm on my last lap. I'm on my last. This is the last time you'll see me cry like this. This is the last time you'll see me suffering like this. This is the last time you'll see me worried like this. Because I'm on my last lap. Father, we bless you. And we thank you so much for being a God who can tear down any wall that's standing in our way from receiving what you've promised us. And to, to every online viewer that's out there, if you're not saved, and if you have yet to give your life to Christ, I'm glad that we serve a God who can be in more than one place at the same time. Just as God is here, He's in your house as well. He's on your job as well. If you're looking and viewing us online on your job. I want you to just bow your heads and repeat after me. If you're not saved and you want to give your life to Christ. 
Just bow your head right where you are. I see the tears flowing from your face right now. I see you. Do you want this wall to come down? This wall is going to come down. Father, we bless you. As a matter of fact, tell him you love him. And God, I want to give my life to you. I know that I am a sinner. Come on, repeat after me. I know that I am a sinner all online. If you want to give your life to Christ. And I know that Jesus died for my sins. And he rose from the grave to save me from my sins. God, I give my heart to you. I want to work for you. I want to serve you like no other. And God, right now, I claim it. I believe it that I am saved by the grace of God. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Well, if you pray that prayer, everywhere you go now, you tell that I, I am saved. And be sure this is a ministry that you want to connect with. This ministry is above doing ministry in excellence. And please just type online, Pastor Christopher Swims is doing an awesome job in this city. Amen. And I'm telling you, you want to connect with this church. It is a Bible-based believing church that's on the move. And if you're not ready to worship God, if you're not ready to go to another level, if you're not ready for the walls to come, come down, this may not be your church. Yeah. But if anybody that's ready for the wall to fall and you know that you're on your last lap,